This summer I'm in a relationship, so I definitely don't have eyes for any of the girls in the house. Natalie is my gorgeous girlfriend. We've been together for almost a year. If I mess up, Natalie would hang me by my toes and cut my penis off. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss Summer House Martha's Vineyard, season two, episode one. And before we get started, let me just say I love this episode. This was a very strong premiere episode. I told y'all at the Summer House Martha's Vineyard premiere party, I saw everybody on this cast. I have a lot of tea for you. We had former cast members there as well. I chopped it up with pretty much everybody. So throughout this recap, expect to hear some tea and the tea is piping hot. Now, let me also add this. I really think that we are in for a treat this season. And on top of that, I believe that they will finally get a reunion this time around. I think that season one, they were owed a reunion, a cute one part reunion, maybe in the clubhouse. But this season with the multiple storylines going on, there's about to be a potential love triangle. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But with all the drama, and everybody has drama this season, all right? So, bravo, get on it. Make sure that Summer House Martha's Vineyard gets a real reunion this time around because they deserve, and this season is about to give what the other girls were supposed to have gave in the words of the iconic Rolling Ray. But without further ado, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up the premiere episode with everybody headed back to Martha's Vineyard. We hear Jasmine narrating. She's like, hey, Martha girl, what's up? You're still my favorite place, but a lot has changed since last summer. We find out that Jasmine and Jordan aren't close. They used to be best friends slash sister cousins, but now Jordan has gotten close to Summer and they hang out all the time and she's left out. Now, I have a lot to say about that. I'm gonna drop some tea right now. At the premiere party last week, you could feel the tension between the cast members because Jasmine and Jordan present day still aren't close. I discussed it with Jasmine, we talked about it, and she said she's not even upset about it anymore, but there is a divide and they're not close. It's really unfortunate to see that a show can change the dynamic of a friendship. Now, I have my theories on why I feel like things are off between them. I'll talk more about that later on, but it's really unfortunate that they were super close and now all of a sudden they're in the second season of their show and they're no longer friends. It also sucks because Jasmine is the one who brought this whole group together. She was the one who got them all a check. So it is a slap in the face that her best friend slash sister cousin Jordan is no longer really speaking to her. A hot mess, but we'll talk more about that later on. But yeah, present day, Jordan and Jasmine still aren't close. It's a shame. And shout out to Jasmine. She's a sweetheart. She looked good. We chopped it up multiple times throughout the night. Just an absolute doll. She's lovely. So we also find out from Jasmine that Nick and Amir are super close. They both go on double dates with their girlfriends. Remember that Amir has a girlfriend and Nick has his girlfriend, Tasia, who he kept a secret last season. Now, some more tea for y'all. According to Nick's friends, who I talked to at the party, Nick and his girlfriend, Tasia, are no longer together. So I guess we'll talk more about that if they do have a reunion this season. But yeah, word on the curve is Nick is a single man. Now, shout out to Nick. Nick was really sweet. We talked for a bit at the party and he was definitely giving single vibes, okay? I, child, I told you I have some tea. Nick, don't be upset. This is what I do. I just have to report on what I see, okay? <laughs> and Amir, I was on you all last season. I had talked about how rude you were the first time I met you at the last premiere party for season one, but baby, he did a complete 180. Amir was sweet, he was welcoming, gave me a big hug. I said, okay, Amir, you must have seen me giving you the blues all last season in the recaps. 
But yeah, this time you change it around. He was very lovely, personable, down to earth. I said, okay. I said, all right. I'm happy to see this. But yeah, Amir, I might be a bit easier on you this time around. <laughs> But it was very nice seeing you. And Amir's girlfriend, Natalie, is very sweet. We talked briefly. She's lovely. But I also want to say this. Remember Mariah last season, how they kicked her off the show? They kicked her out the house. Mariah was there. Hey, girl, we talked for a long time. Mariah looked good. And Bravo, please put Mariah back on the show. Now, me and Campire at one point asked Mariah if her and Amir had made up, did he ever apologize to her? And Mariah was like, oh no, uh-uh, we don't talk. I don't like him. He better stay over there. I'm gonna be right here. Child, about 10 minutes later, I'm at the bar getting a drink and I see out my peripheral, Amir walks up to Mariah. He gives her a hug and they chop it up and they're all good. So me and Kempire see that and we're like, wait, so you guys are good now? And she's like, well, I guess so. I said, oh, okay. I said, look at the premiere party, bringing everybody together. <laughs> and Jason was also there too. Remember him? He was the flight attendant. He used to be Jasmine's roommate. He was only on for the second half of the season, but he's not back on. But we talked about that. And I said, Jason, I thought you did a great job. I thought that you were fun. You were level-headed. You were lighthearted. I thought you made great TV. So hopefully they'll have Jason back in some capacity for season three. Now, Jason did give me some tea that Bravo said, look, we're not going to have you back as a full-time cast member, but you are willing to come back for season two, but you have to pay your own way. I was just like, oh no, Bravo, y'all have too much money. Y'all are making billions off of these shows. Y'all know good and well that you guys have a cute 5,000 to send Jason there. He should not have to come out of pocket, but yeah, I told y'all the tea is piping hot and there's more where that came from. But now we see Bria arrive to the house first. And mind you, we're in a brand new house this year. Bravo definitely upped the budget. This house is gorgeous, stunning. There's a trampoline outside. You have the gorgeous pool. There's a playground. I mean, they did that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Jasmine arrives next and she's without Silas this season. We find out that Silas is deployed. He's in Eastern Europe right now and it's going to be just her in the house. Now, I know that a lot of y'all were like, thank you, Jesus, because last season, Silas got on all of our nerves. The way he was treating our girl Jasmine, we were all like, um, excuse me, I don't think so. So I'm curious to see how Jasmine's going to maneuver in this group without Silas. So Bria and Jasmine hug. They're happy to see each other. Jasmine says that in the past, her and Bria have had a shady relationship, but now things are good. They had recently seen each other at Simon's birthday party. They were dancing, had some drinks, and it was like old times again. Now, when we see Jordan and Summer on their way to the house, they're talking about Jordan's relationship with Jasmine. Summer's like, well, how are you guys right now? Because we're about to be on vacation together in this house for the next two weeks. So Jordan agrees and she says, yeah, me and Jasmine haven't talked like that. It just felt like last year she wasn't being herself. Then she goes on to add that Jasmine was acting like she had to be the perfect wife and the perfect person. And she just wants Jasmine to be real. Now, Jordan, I'm gonna just say this right now. I call BS on this whole thing about Jasmine was trying to be a different person. That's a reach. You're icing her out and you don't really have a legitimate reason to do so. I could see if Jasmine was talking badly about you or if she was jealous or if she had been really nasty, but it seems like it's some really petty stuff and you're trying to blow this out of proportion as to why you don't want to talk to her. If you don't want to be friends, that's fine. You have the right to no longer want to be around somebody. That's your right. That's your prerogative. I'm not saying to continue a friendship when you're over it. But what I am saying is that this seems like a bogus excuse that 
you feel like, oh, Jasmine is trying to be perfect and that's why I don't want to talk to her, that's BS. And again, it's a slap in the face because Jasmine put this group together and she put all of y'all on to get a check. And it was really irritating because Jordan kept using that excuse throughout the episode. She kept saying, just be the lighthearted, goofy person that you used to be. She wasn't like this before. And let's just stop for a minute. People are allowed to change. You should be changing every year. You should be changing every day. Are people not allowed to reinvent themselves? So how dare you act like, oh, she wasn't like this when I first met her, now she's changed. That's normal. So now Jordan and Summer arrive to the house and they all greet each other. Of course, it's a bit awkward between Jasmine and Jordan. You can definitely tell that things are not the same, but we see them looking for their rooms and now Summer mentions that her friend Noelle is going to be joining them. Now, shout out to Noelle. Noelle is the newest cast member of the show, and we talked for a while at the party as well. Noelle is such a sweetheart. She's so much fun. You can tell that she's excited about the show. And Noelle, anytime you want to come on this platform, feel free. I would love to talk to you and chop it up with you on here, okay? But you're more than welcome. We talked about that too. But yeah, Noelle is about to give the girls a run for their money and I can't wait. So now Shanice arrives. We all remember Shanice. Shanice was like the wild child of the group. She was always going topless. She kind of reminded me of Ashley Darby, but just less messy. Like she's all about a good time. She's not trying to start drama. But Shanice shows up. She's excited because this season she's going to be in the house full time. Now, one thing about it, Shanice loves to drink. Anytime she's in a scene, she's always asking for somebody to pour up a shot. So she's pouring them all some tequila and Jasmine makes a joke saying, oh guys, this summer I'm a mocktail mommy. Alex converted me because we know that Alex doesn't drink and he's vegan. So they were all looking at her like, girl, what? Jordan was like, okay, I mean, that's nice for you. And you could tell they were all staring at Jasmine like, what's the real reason why you're not drinking? And throughout the episode, I think it's Bria who goes on to ask somebody, do you think that Jasmine's pregnant? Now, here's my thing about that. I don't know why people act like it's the worst thing in the world if somebody does not drink. I don't know why you need to question somebody if they don't drink. It's none of your business. And the way they were all staring at Jasmine like that, it was off-putting. If she doesn't want to drink, she doesn't want to drink. Why do you care? And this is coming from somebody who does indulge, okay? I love a good glass of champagne. I love a margarita. But if I'm around somebody who doesn't drink, my first inclination is not to ask, oh, why don't you drink? It's none of my business. So the first guy to get to the house is Alex. And there's already tension. He walks in the house and everybody says hello to him except for Summer. We find out that Summer and Alex had a bit of a fling after last summer. Summer says that she would hang out with him when she was in New York and he would come out and visit her when he was in LA. So you can read between the lines that something else happened and Summer's not happy. But Summer ignores Alex, Alex ignores Summer. And then as he's trying to find his room, you hear Summer call him trash. Now I said, Summer, you are aware that you look extremely pressed about this man. Now the whole bedroom situation for the guys is hilarious because downstairs there's this huge room with four bunk beds. So Alex was like, you've got to be kidding me. These are like glorified prison bunks. <laughs> and it was also funny because when Preston came to the house, when he went downstairs with Alex, he was like, oh no, they have us down here. And when I tell you that Preston lucked up because Jordan whispers to him, Preston, come up. There's another room for you. Take it, baby. The way Preston gathered up his suitcases and ran up those steps and got that room. <laughs> now, Preston was my favorite last season. I love his energy. And to meet Preston in person, he is exactly how you think he would be. He is so sweet. He's engaging. He's charismatic. He's working the room. He was so lovely. I just love meeting the Bravo celebrities who don't take themselves too seriously. They're grateful. They're down to earth. Because some of these 
people think that they're Beyonce. So Jordan is going to be hosting the first dinner and she wants to have a nice seafood boil with some potatoes and all that yummy stuff. And we see that Jasmine, Preston, and Bria are going to head to the store to get all the food. Now, before they go, Preston's like, oh, let's take a shot. And we see Preston, Shanice, Bria, and Summer all take shots. And Preston says, cheers to Jamaica part 17. Now we find out that Preston, Jordan, Summer, and Shanice all went to Jamaica last summer and they excluded Jordan. And I thought it was really shady of Jordan to say, oh, well, you can't invite everybody. And I'm like, again, how do you not invite your best friend who got you on a TV show and is putting a check in your pocket and some fame? I'm not liking that. And I'm not liking this whole let's ice out Jasmine. And I think that's going to be a recurring theme throughout this season where she's going to be the odd man out. Nick and Amir arrive, and now we see Noelle arrive. Again, Noelle in person is lovely. She's fun. I think that she is a fantastic addition to the show. And she comes in with a bunch of personality. Now, off rip, Noelle's personality reminds me of Tamar Braxton. Very animated, very over the top, very expressive, and that makes for good TV. Because one thing about it, while Tamar might do the most, she's always been entertaining, good or bad. But anyhow, Noelle's there. All the guys seem to be impressed, especially Alex. You have Noelle in her room. And I have to ask this, why would y'all give Noelle the room with two beds in there. Noelle should have got in the room that Preston got, in my opinion, and then two of the guys should have got in Noelle's room. I think that Nick and Amir should have got in the room that Noelle got, in my opinion. But we get to know Noelle a bit more. She says that she's a member of AKA. She's from the South. She was born and raised in Atlanta, but she lives in New York now. Now we find out from Summer that her and Noelle met I think she said last summer because Summer was dating Noelle's roommate. So she says that one day she was over at the apartment where Noelle and her roommate lived, who Summer was dating, and Noelle was there in the living room and then they hit it off and they talked for two hours and they became fast friends. Now, I'm not surprised that you and Noelle became fast friends because who wouldn't be friends somebody who just came off of a popular TV show and they're looking for somebody else to join the house. Noelle definitely lucked up in finding a friend in summer. <laughs> so as Noelle's in her room unpacking, we flip to the rest of the ladies downstairs in the kitchen and they're talking about Amir's girlfriend. Shanice is like, oh, what did you guys think when we met her? And Summer says, I felt like she was very standoffish. They all agree. And then Shanice is like, yeah, relax, girl. We don't want your man. So Jordan's like, yeah, that's the gag. He wanted you. My thing about Summer calling Amir's girlfriend standoffish Summer, you were a bit standoffish at the party. So I found it comical that you were calling anybody standoffish. I said, girl, you as well. <laughs> the same could be said about you too. It's no shade, but I have to call it like I see it. Maybe you'll be friendlier at the next premiere party that I see you at. Or maybe if you're at BravoCon this year, maybe you'll be pleasant. But yeah, at the premiere party, you weren't that friendly, but I was around when you were saying that you and Bria aren't on good terms right now. A mess. This scene with Jasmine, Bria, and Preston in the car coming back from the shop with the seafood, I thought it was touching. Preston shares that his father passed away. He appreciated all them sending him love and support. And we find out that his father's funeral is tomorrow. Now, let me just say my heart goes out to Preston. I know what that feels like. I lost my father. It'll be three years in May. And my heart really goes out to you. But we find out that Preston and his dad weren't close. His dad was an alcoholic. His dad was abusive. And his dad was out of his life for a big chunk of his life. 
He says that when he graduated law school, that's when he came back around and it felt disingenuous. So we learned from Preston that he found out about his dad's passing from a Google alert. And we also find out that his dad's side of the family is trying to ice Preston and his siblings out from all the plans. Preston, you have the patience of a saint because the way I would go off and everybody would get it if my dad's side of the family ever tried that. So I'm getting mad for you because how dare they try to ice you and your siblings out of the plans. I hope you pay your dad's side of the family dust. My heart broke for Preston when he started crying and said, I really need my friends right now. And I loved how Jasmine said, we got you Preston, however you wanna honor him, however you wanna spend the day, we got you, we're behind you, we got your back. So I told y'all, it's about to be a little love triangle this season because back at the house, we see everybody in the kitchen and as they're prepping for dinner, we see Noel and Alex talking. So he's asking Noelle, where is she from? Because he notices that her accent sounds Southern. And she says, oh yeah, baby, I'm from the South, born and raised in Atlanta, but now I live in Bed-Stuy. And I'm pretty sure that Alex also lives in Brooklyn too. But yeah, Alex is out and about. And shout out to Alex. He was very sweet at the premiere party. We also talked. And a quick side note, I was screaming because Alex called me out about why I was so hard on him last season. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> I was like, Alex, I was just giving my opinion. That's all it is. It's all just fun and entertainment. But he was a good sport about it. He was like, I understand. I get it. And he even admitted that the last season didn't really highlight the best parts of his personality. So he could understand why people felt like, eh, he can go. But he was a good sport, very sweet. We had a good time, good seeing him. And if I should ever join one of these shows, you guys have carte blanche to talk about me. <laughs> You'd be like, oh my gosh, Brooke, did you see her in this week's episode? Child, why did she say that? Why did she do that? <laughs> I'll be like, it's fair game. It is fair game. <laughs> So we find out from Noelle that she's single and ready to mingle. And she's seen Alex out a lot of times, but she's never talked to him like that. But she says that she always thought that Alex was cute and fun. And you know, she has her eye on him. And now Noelle brings up how Summer told her, don't worry about me and Alex. If you wanna go with him, that's fine. And Shanice had me screaming in her confessional. She said, now, if I were Noelle, I would have a longer conversation with Summer about them just dating. So as everybody's getting ready for dinner, we hear Jordan and Summer talking about Noelle thinking that Alex is cute. And Summer's trying to brush it off. She says, yeah, I told Noelle she has full agency. She can do whatever she wants because I don't care about that man. Now, again, your words and your actions don't line up. Your facial expressions give you away, sis. It's okay. You fell in heavy like for this man and you do feel a way about it. But your actions show that you're pressed about Alex. So dinner's ready, the food looked amazing. Now mind you, Bria cooked the crabs and the way she poured in about a month's worth of Old Bay seasoning into that pot, <laughs> you already know that those crabs were going to be seasoned. They looked good. My mouth was watering. Y'all know I love seafood. I love some crabs. I love some lobster with some potatoes. Stop playing with me. And then they had some caviar too. I love caviar. I was like, oh, okay. They really upped the budget. <laughs> Now I thought that we were going to have a nice dinner. It was going to be just jokes and peaceful, but the way this dinner went off the rails like that, Jordan brings up how Alex had this event recently where he invited only some of the group and not everybody. And you have Bria saying, I was invited. A few other people say, yeah, I was invited too. And now you have Jordan saying, no, Alex, everybody was not invited. Alex is defending himself. He's like, look, I posted the event up on Instagram. If you had seen it, you are welcome to RSVP and you could have come too. 
we find out that Alex has a music community. He hosts these live events and anybody's welcome to attend if they follow the Instagram page. So Alex says, well, honestly, I had no idea that Summer was even in New York at the time. Summer calls BS and she says, that's not true, Alex. We were on a group FaceTime call. I was staying at Jordan's house. You saw me in the call, so you knew that I was there. So as they're jumping on Alex, Bria jumps in and she says, now Summer, I love you. But when you guys went out to dinner, I think she was saying when Summer, Shanice, and Jordan all went out, she's like, I didn't get an invitation. So Jordan's like, that's different, Bria, because Summer was staying at my place. So now Summer jumps in and she's like, girl, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a whole event that went down, not some dinner. I didn't throw a party and then not invite you. That's different. So as Summer and Bria are going back and forth, Preston interjects and he's like, wait, what the F is happening right now? Why are they arguing? And now Bria turns to Preston and she's like, Preston, if you want me to leave, then I'll leave. So of course that leads into Bria and Preston going at it. And I'm like, Bria, you are no match for Preston because Preston will read you down. And these temper tantrums are not going to fly. And I'm not gonna hold you, when Preston and Bria got into it, the argument was so stupid. And then when you got up to leave the table and you're cursing and doing all that, it was embarrassing. There was no need for you to lash out at Preston. Amir was over all the BS because he goes inside and he says, I just don't understand. Bria is the only person in this house who's allowed to go off on people, have these tantrums, and then say, I love you five minutes later. And you can tell that although Amir and Bria are super close, they're like brother and sister, you can tell that even Amir gets tired of Bria's antics because she's exhausting. Now we go back to Summer pressing Alex about why she wasn't invited to Alex's event and everybody around the table is pressuring Alex to give a reason as to why Summer was excluded. So you have Summer saying, just be honest, Alex, because you're lying, you're not telling the truth. So child, when I tell you what Summer said next changed the entire trajectory of this conversation and the entire vibe of the rest of the night. Summer says, why can't you just be honest, especially to the person that you've been inside of? So everybody's like, oh damn, is that what we're doing? Alex looked mortified that Summer's putting their business out on blast like that. And I said, Summer, that was such an immature and desperate thing to do. You wanted everybody in the house to know that you and Alex have been having sex. And there was no reason for you to say that. It also shows that you really do have feelings for Alex and you feel a way that Alex curved you. And if you were hoping that you and Alex could rekindle your little love affair, you completely killed your chances of that because again, that was a very immature move. And low key, it felt like you really wanted to make sure that Noelle knew that you and Alex had been having sex because you probably don't want Noelle to hook up with Alex because you still have feelings for Alex. So Alex says, okay, you wanna play this game, then let's play. If you wanna call me out, then call yourself out. Hold your own feet to the fire and ask yourself, have I done this to anybody else in this group? So of course it's real quiet because they know that they've been excluding Jasmine for an entire year. So of course it's crickets and now Alex points out how Jasmine has been left out of several events. We see the flashbacks when they were all at the Vov Clico Polo Classic Challenge. They all went and did not invite Jasmine. Then the Jamaica trip, Jasmine was not there. So I just said, y'all didn't think this out well because Jordan, you've been the main one excluding your best friend, but you want to put Alex's feet to the fire? So Jasmine jumps in and says, it's no secret. I haven't been invited to a lot of events and I wanna understand why am I being excluded? I feel so disconnected from this group. I'm the one who's been reaching out to all the girls, checking on them, but my phone is dry. And I said, now Jasmine, the stories that I could share with you, because I know what that's like, sis. I know what that's like. And I loved how Jasmine really got in her bag and said, if we're being honest, None of y'all would know each other if it had not been for me. And I said, exactly. Jasmine goes down the list and says that she talks to Bria 
and Alex sometimes. And she's always calling Shanice, but Shanice never answers her phone because she's out and about. Then she says that her and Summer have talked a few times. But me and Jordan, I don't know where I stand with her. So you have Jordan all quiet, just nodding her head. Then Jordan says, well, I'm open to a conversation, just not in front of everybody. And I just want to throw out my theory of why I feel like Jordan and the rest of the girls are icing Jasmine out. I think that it's jealousy. Hear me out. Jasmine is the one who put this group together. She was the one who got approached for this show. And... There's something called resentment when somebody feels like you're the connector. People get very envious of the leader of the group or the person who put everybody together. And there's a saying that my parents used to always say, familiarity breeds contempt. People can be close to you and people can love you, but they can also get jealous if they feel like you're the top person who put everybody on. I know you might think I'm crazy, but I've really studied human nature and I feel like I'm usually on point when I'm watching these shows because it's usually a mix of some resentment, jealousy, and some other BS sprinkled in there. But again, I digress. So the seafood dinner is over and now we get to the next day Everybody's getting ready. They're about to be going on a yacht, having some fun. But we do see Alex in his confessional, and he says that last night was filled with drama, and Summer saying that comment about him being inside of her, it showed that she was trying to get a reaction out of him, but it didn't work. So we see Jasmine in her room, and she's on FaceTime with Silas, because Silas sent her a bouquet of flowers. She says that they had a really tough year last year. They had to go back into counseling. And then she goes on to say that she's not perfect by far, but if she is failing as a friend, then she expects for Jordan to communicate that and let her know. Jasmine, let me be the first to tell you, I don't think that you're failing as a friend. I think it's some other stuff and she's coming up with BS excuses to not speak to you. That's what I believe. So it's a gorgeous sunny day in Martha's Vineyard. They're now on the boat and Preston says that today is the day of his father's funeral. He's wrestling with a lot of emotions today and I loved how they gave him the space to just talk and air out his feelings. And this is what friends are supposed to do. So we see everybody eating and now Jordan and Jasmine go off to the side to have a talk and discuss where they stand in their friendship. Jasmine lays it out on the line. She says, we haven't spoken in quite some time. It's hurtful. The distance between us, I feel it. And I want to understand your point of view. What have I done? Please let me know. Now, I think that Jasmine is an excellent communicator. She was just like, look, girl, I can take it. If I've done something that's pissed you off, just let me know. But you not speaking, I don't understand it. I'm here in limbo. Just lay it all out on the line. I noticed that Jordan was super vague with her answers. She says, well, it just felt like I couldn't trust the person that I was seeing. And I'm like, what does that mean? And then for Jordan to go on and say that she was freaked out, and I was like, you were freaked out. Jordan states again that she felt like Jasmine trying to put on this act of being perfect, the perfect wife and dress cleanly. That was just too much for her. Then she says that when she first met Jasmine, Jasmine had this shaved short cut. I'm like, girl, what does a haircut have to do with anything? Are people not allowed to evolve? So because she had a short haircut in 2018, that means that now she's trying to be something else. Like, what are you saying? Jordan, in my humble opinion, that reasoning made absolutely no sense. I think that there might be some resentment and some jealousy that you feel like Jasmine got this group together, got this show on Bravo, and she helped you guys out. That's what I think it is. Because I'm so sorry, but I'm not hearing any legitimate reasons as to why you're angry at her. And listen, I'm somebody, I will cut somebody off like that. I have no issue with that. So when I'm saying that this reason feels stupid, that says a lot. 
Because I'm very quick to say, if you sense jealousy, if somebody has done you wrong, if they've stolen from you, whatever, cut them off. No explanation needed. You don't need to have a sit down with somebody who's hurt you. But in this case, I call BS. I feel like Jordan is reaching for problems and these problems are so trivial. So Jordan brings up the group text that she was in with Silas and Jasmine. And she says, you remember last summer that me and Silas came to a resolve. And then when I asked you, how can we get better? You didn't respond back to that text. Jasmine was like, girl, are you serious? Out of the hundreds of texts that we've had, out of all the calls that we've exchanged, you want to blame me for not responding to this text. You've got to be kidding me. Again, I felt like Jordan's argument was weak. And Jasmine, if I were you, I would just let the friendship die. We can be acquaintances. It's no beef between us, but we're not going to be friends. And you could feel that Jordan had checked out of the conversation because at one point Jasmine got emotional and she's like, nobody in this group ever checks up on me. And Jordan's just sitting there and I'm like, damn, you really don't like her, do you? And I feel bad because Jasmine is going to be in for a rough season where she's on an island all by herself. So we go from one serious conversation to another. We have Summer and Alex off to the side talking and Alex is asking Summer, what possessed her to say that and put their business out on front street at the table last night? So Summer says, I just felt like it was disrespectful for me to be excluded from your event. Then she goes on to say that since he's been inside of her, there should be a certain level of love and respect for each other. Now, when she threw out the word love, I said, oh my gosh, Summer, you're giving Danielle vibes from the original Summer House. If you watch the original Summer House, then you know that Danielle is desperate with a capital D and she is another person who pretends like she can handle having a situationship or casual sex and she spirals. If you saw her on this last season of Winter House, the way she spiraled over Alex, she went nuts. Summer, don't tell me that you're another Danielle because if so, girl, please stop what you're doing and seek out some therapy. But Alex was freaked out. He said, I mean, yeah, we hung out a few times, but her saying love, that's a reach. No. Uh -uh. So Alex clearly isn't budging. And now Summer says, I'm just saying, Alex, if we both have events, I expect to be included in every one. And Alex simply tells her, that's not a fair expectation. I can't promise you that. So Summer realizes that she's not going to get Alex to say what she wants to hear. So she's like, you know what, Alex, that's fair. So now Alex says, I'm just trying to figure out where your head is at because what goes on between us, that's our business. I don't need everybody in this room knowing. So now Summer says, well, everybody already knew. So we find out that Summer told Jordan and Jordan being messy ran off and told somebody else. So Nick says he knew because he's friends with both Summer and Alex. So Alex says, here's what happened. I was visiting Summer in LA. We were doing our thing. And the next thing I know, Nick calls me up like, hey, how's LA with Summer? So I'm like, wait, how did you know that I'm with Summer right now? And he says, oh, because Jordan sent me a picture with you in LA with Summer. So he was like, I thought that was weird that you're taking pictures of me without me knowing and then sending it to other people in this group. We're obviously not on the same page. I said, damn, Summer, you are really sprung. Was the D that good that you're sitting up here snapping pictures of him? He doesn't even know it and then sending it to people in the group. Really? Girl, are we 19? Like what's going on, Summer? Summer goes on to say that Alex is trying to make it a point to say that we're not in a relationship. And she says, but I never asked you for one. And I said, girl, you don't have to ask. Your actions are showing that you want something more with Alex. So Summer apologizes for setting these unrealistic expectations. And she says, look, I'm sorry. And now they're cool and everybody's just dancing, having a good time. And that's where we end the first episode. Y'all, I'm excited for what this season is about to bring. 
we are in for some drama. This season, I was told it's going to be 10 episodes. So yeah, y'all, we're in for a treat. It's going to be some drama, a love triangle. Everybody gets into it with Bria from what I heard. And Lord willing, they'll get a reunion. But yeah, guys, Summer House Martha's Vineyard, y'all did that. This was a very solid premiere episode. I enjoyed it. I love that it was a supersized episode. It was a cute hour and 15 minutes. I said, yes. But guys, that was my recap. I hope you all enjoyed. And thank you so much for watching. You already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.